Welcome to Electron Online. Now that we're beginning to understand Coulomb's law and the electric field and Gauss's law a little bit, a little bit better, now let's explore why an electron stays in orbit around the nucleus of an atom in a hydrogen atom. So here we have the nucleus, which is the proton, and we have a small electron some distance away zipping around the nucleus, around that proton pretty quick. And in the previous video, we realized that the electric field strength at the location of the electron due to the proton right here is equal to 5.1 times 10 to the minus 11 newtons per coulomb. An enormously powerful electric field resides there. Now the distance to the electron is 53 or 0.53 angstroms, which is 53 picometers, and a picometer is 10 to the minus 12 meters. So the orbit of an electron, in essence, represents a Gaussian surface. Because electrons do not orbit around the nucleus like a planet around the sun, it kind of orbits around it in such a way that it basically forms a spherical structure called an orbital around the nucleus. So it really is a good representation of the Gaussian surface. Now, we know there's going to be an enormously powerful force of attraction because we know that when you place a charged object, inside an electric field, it's going to experience a force. And so let's go ahead and calculate that force. We know that the electric field, or the force, experienced by a charge placed in an electric field is going to be equal to the size of the charge times the magnitude of the electric field. So since the electron has a charge that is known, let's go ahead and plug that in here and calculate the force. So the force is equal to Q. Q is the charge of electron, which is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. And then the electric field, which we calculated in the previous video, is right here, which is 5.1 times 10 to the 11th newtons per coulomb. And so notice the coulombs cancel out, and we end up with newtons. So that will be the force of attraction. And we can say that's a 1.6 e to the 19 minus times 5.1 e to the 11th, and so that gives us a force. It may not seem like much because the number seems small, but remember, this is the force between a single proton and a single electron, and it's 8.16 times 10 to the minus 8 newtons. That's actually an absolute enormous force. Now what that force does, of course, it provides what we call the centripetal force that pulls it inward. Without that force between them, of course, the electron, since it's moving pretty fast, will just simply move straight and leave the proton. But that force of attraction, the Coulomb force, does provide what we call the centripetal force. And we know that the centripetal force is equal to the mass times the centripetal acceleration, which is equal to m times v squared over r. So since we know that the, and if we call this the Coulomb force, and the, oh wait, that's both with the C's, isn't it? Well, let's call that the force caused by electric field. We'll put a little sub E here. So that's the force caused by electric field. That's the force, the centripetal force necessary to keep the electron in orbit. And of course, we know the electron stays in orbit. So we can set those two equal to each other. So we can say that the centripetal force is provided for by the electric force, the Coulomb force, causing the electron to go around in circles. So if we then write mv squared over r must be equal to that Coulomb force, or the force caused by the electric field, which of course we can now use this equation to solve for the velocity of the electron. So that's what we're going to do next, is figure out how fast does the electron move and that's going to be v squared is equal to the radius of that orbit times the force caused by electric field divided by the mass. And of course, the radius of the orbit is equal to the Bohr radius. We call that a sub naught times f sub e divided by the mass. And then if we take the square root of both sides, let's come up here. We know the velocity is therefore equal to the square root of the Bohr radius times the force caused by the electric field divided by the mass of the electron. So now let's plug those numbers in and see how fast an electron moves or zips around the nucleus of a hydrogen atom. So that's equal to, that would be uh, 53 times 10 to the minus 12. The result that we got from here, which is the force, 8.16 
times 10 to the minus 8. And then we divide that by the mass of an electron, which is 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. All right. So I left the units off, make it a little bit cleaner. And so let's calculate the velocity. Uh, times 53 e to the 12th minus divided by 9.11 e to the 31 minus equals. Take the square root of that. And wow, that's pretty quick. That's about two point, so the velocity is equal to 2.18 times 10 to the sixth. Was it sixth? Oh, yes, times 10 to the sixth meters per second. That's more than 2 million meters per second. That's more than 2,000 kilometers per second, roughly about 1,300 miles per second. So when you think about that, the electron moves so fast that it could literally travel from LA to New York in about two seconds. Wow. And so the electron zips around the tiny little orbit around the nucleus of a hydrogen atom at this enormous speed. So this is roughly speaking, I'm just approximating about 1300 miles per second. So those electrons zip around that nucleus at an enormous speed. Now we wonder, well, how many times does the electron go around the nucleus because it's moving that fast? Well, what we could do is realize that the distance is equal to the velocity times time. So the time is equal to distance divided by velocity. And of course, the time that it takes to make one orbit, that's called the period. So the period is equal to the distance, which is 2 pi times the radius, which is the Bohr radius, divided by the velocity. So now let's see how long it takes for an electron to make one trip around the nucleus. So the period is equal to 2 pi times 53 times 10 to the minus 12. That would be, of course, meters. And velocity, we have that as 2.18 times 10 to the sixth meters per second. And so the answer will come out in seconds. So take the inverse of that times 2 times pi times 53 e to the 12th minus equals and wow. So the period is equal to 1.53 times 10 to the minus 16 seconds. So in the incredibly small amount of time of 1.5 times 10 to the minus 16 seconds, the electron makes one trip around the nucleus. So if we want to know the frequency, which is the inverse of the period, which is 1 over 1.53 times 10 to the minus 16 seconds. And so the frequency will be equal to, take the inverse of that, that's roughly 6,500 trillion times per second. 6,500 trillion times per second. That's how many times an electron zips around the nucleus inside a hydrogen atom. Imagine that. And all this can be figured out using the concept of the electric field, the Coulomb force, and Gauss's law, realizing that as the electron zips around the nucleus, it is being pulled towards the nucleus with a sufficient amount of force to keep it in orbit even at these enormous speeds that the electron has inside the atom and therefore it can go around the nucleus that many times per second. In essence, that is basically the secret to the existence of atoms because if it didn't go around so many times, the electron couldn't physically make a shell, a hard shell of existence around the nucleus giving volume and giving solidity to the orbitals of the electrons, making therefore atoms. Otherwise, if you try to stack atoms on top of each other, well, they wouldn't be able, you wouldn't be able to do that because the electrons wouldn't be going around the nucleus enough times per second to form those orbitals. But that's the secret to why matter exists in the shape that it does. That's life, and that's the universe.